Context in Archaeology, Part 1. What is it? Context. Okay. What is context in archaeology? Context, as we've already learned, is super important. We're always talking about, oh, the archaeologist needs context. Oh, looting destroys the context. Uh, in order to tell the story of the past, we need the context. So what, what is this context demon that we're talking about? Context is really three things. It is matrix, association, and provenience, those three things. And you can think of it as MAP, M-A-P, right? Matrix, Association, Provenience. MAP makes context. So, part one, matrix. What is matrix? Matrix is just the stuff the artifact's found in. Ah, easy. What are some examples of matrices? Hmm, I know. You want to say dirt. Ugh. Oh, plebs. Uh, I can't believe you would, wouldn't say soil. <laughs> Who cares? It's dirt. Right? Dirt is a very common matrice. What else? Hmm. Sand. Sure. Some, oh, and somebody always got to throw in amber. Uh, true, yes, yes, there's amber. What are the chances of finding something in amber? And amber, for those of us who don't know, that's that stuff when you find like an ant in that uh, tree sap stuff. That's in amber. But for archaeology, we're going with uh, dirt, we're going with sand, and those other more spectacular, the, the other more spectacular, the other more spectacular things like ice, um, water is a, is a matrix. And, and so on, right? You can, you can think of these things. Uh, peat in a peat bog, that is a, a, a very specific matrix that's very good for preservation. Uh, the one that everyone forgets, check this out. What is the matrix of King Tut? The actual remains of the boy child. And by boy child, I mean boy pharaoh. What is his matrix? Wood? No. Oh, gold! Air! Matrix is air! You have to realize air can be one too. If you're in a dry cave or something like this, that is the matrix. It's step one in, in sort of telling the story of that, of that artifact. You want to know what it's, what it's found in. Part two, the A, association. What it's found with. So this is very commonly based on the stratigraphy. That is the most common association. So if I have like a pot and an arrowhead in this stratigraphy, this layer of dirt, and then I have a, uh, a second, a spear point down here in this other layer, the pot and the arrowhead are in association. The spear point down here is not in association with the pot and the arrowhead because it's in a different layer. So it's a layering way of thinking. Association is pretty straightforward. You can get more severe and, and more difficult if you're trying to associate something that's like two miles away. You can see that, how the stratigraphy would be much more difficult. But at ye average archaeological site, uh, the association thing is pretty straightforward. Got it? Association. Something like um, uh, something like the Titanic, everything's in an association because it's like a sinking event. It happened in one moment in time, boom, everything's in, a, uh, in association. King Tut's tomb, too, it's the same thing. It's all in association because it's one burial event. But if you're looking at a village that's a thousand years old, you know, everything is not in association. It depends on how deep it is and what layer and is it related, you know, to something within that same layer. That's association. Now finally, M-A-P, provenience. The provenience of an artifact is its place in time and space. Just think that it's, it's, it's its location in time and space. That is an artifact's provenience. So if you have a GPS unit and you mark down its exact coordinates on the globe, that's part of its provenience. If as you're digging your square hole, 
and you measure, oh, it's 31 centimeters down from the surface, it's 26 centimeters from the north wall, and it's 14 centimeters from the east wall, then that's its provenience, its location, very specific in time and space. I think you could also argue, I keep saying time and space, the time part, that it's, uh, that it's date can go into its provenience. Oh, and it's 560 years old. That can be part of its provenience. So, when you take its matrix, what it's found in, its association, what it's found with, and its provenience, where it is in time and space, you put those all into a funnel, and that is an artifact's context. What it's found in, with, and when and where. That is the information we want as archaeologists. That's what you need to tell the story of the past. And that's why earlier when I talked about looted artifacts, when they come back and an archaeologist sees them, that's why they're not like, yeah, look at those. Who cares they were looted? Thank God they're back. No, because the context is gone. We can't answer any of those questions. And it's, and it's sad. So we got to realize the context is super important. And you double down on ideas like you have one shot to record this stuff, you better do a good job.